continued from the previous file, Pygmalion, page 24, Alfred Doolittle's name to a wealthy American as being, quote, the most original moralist at present in England, unquote. As a result, the American in his will left a huge trust fund to Doolittle for delivering six lectures in a year on moral reforms. Consequently, Doolittle has lost his free and easy ways of life and is now forced to maintain middle class morality and respectability. The amount of money is so large that he cannot give it up and return to his earlier state. Having known thus, Mrs. Higgins gets relief thinking that Eliza can now lead a happy life with her father in a wealthy state. Instantly Higgins protests his mother, stating that he bought Eliza for five pounds and that Doolittle cannot deny unless he is a rogue. Doolittle admits that he is part honest and part rogue. Quote, a little of both like the rest of us, unquote. Mrs. Higgins then informs them that Eliza is upstairs but insists her son on promising to behave well with Eliza. Mrs. Higgins further reprimands her son and Pickering for being so completely self-centered and inconsiderate of Eliza's feelings. She asks Mr. Doolittle to step out on the balcony and not cause the poor girl more anxiety and then tells the maid to ask Eliza to come down. The suspense prevails in the interval. Eliza enters the room, sunny, self-possessed and giving a staggeringly convincing exhibition of ease of manner. She carries little work basket and is very much at home. Pickering is too much taken aback to rise. She greets them in a normal language, but Higgins, who seems to be very much perplexed, immediately attempts to treat her as his property as something he created, quote, out of the squashed cabbage leaves of Covent Garden, unquote. In spite of that, Eliza does not allow Higgins to rattle her by his insulting language. On the contrary, she thanks Pickering for having treated her as a lady and never as a gutter snipe. She continues to say that she does not feel obliged to Higgins because he paid for her dresses, but because of the fact that she really learned good manners to be a lady from him. When Pickering reminds her of Higgins's teaching of her, Eliza replies, quote, of course that is his profession, unquote. She asserts that her actual learning began when Colonel started addressing her as Miss Doolittle when she first came to Wimpole Street. She admits that Colonel's courtesy and good manners made her feel that she was better than a scullery maid. It has developed self-respect in her. She further says that, quote, the difference between a lady and a flower girl is not how she behaves, but how she is treated. She thinks that it is Higgins who treats her always as a flower girl, as a flower girl. Eliza's allegations towards her mentor strikes him too much. Pickering, however, jokingly tells her to rejoin him. She refuses the proposal immediately and Higgins predicts that she will, quote, relapse into the gutter in three weeks, unquote without him. Eliza reacts that she could not utter that old sounds even if she tried to do so. At this very moment, Mr. Doolittle enters and touches her lightly on her shoulder. To her, page 25, astonishment, she observes her father's transformation and she uh, immediately utters, quote, ah, ooh. Unquote. This utterly delights and vindicates Higgins. 
Doolittle announces his marriage and asks Eliza to attend the wedding. He explains that like himself, his common-law wife has also been defeated by middle-class morality. Quote, respectability has broke all the spirit out of her, unquote. Eliza goes upstairs to get ready to accompany her father to attend her father's wedding. In her absence, Doolittle confesses that he is nervous as he had been married before. As he had not been married before, not even to Eliza's mother. But he has not told this fact to her. Mrs. Higgins tells him that she along with Eliza will attend the wedding. Pickering leaves with the bridegroom. As Eliza is about to leave, Higgins stops her by blocking the doorway. He says that he wants Eliza to come back, but he will not change his manners towards her, which are similar to those of the colonel. Immediately, Eliza reacts in a negative. Quote, that is not true. He treats a flower girl as if she were a duchess. Unquote. Higgins replies, quote, and I treat a duchess as if she were a flower girl. Unquote. Higgins continues maintaining that good manners or bad manners are not important thing. What is more important is to have quote, the same manner for all human souls, unquote. If he has treated her badly, she has to admit that she has never seen him treat someone else differently or better. He now feels proud to see her as an independent person. He insists that he can get along quite well without her, even though he says, Quote, I have grown accustomed to your voice and appearance, unquote. Eliza reminds him that he has caught her voice and appearance in numerous photographs and recordings. Whenever he feels lonesome, he can turn on one of his recordings of her voice and the album of photographs. Higgins, however, reacts that he cannot turn her, quote, soul, unquote, on and he values quality more than service. He further points out that Eliza cannot buy a claim on him quote, by fetching my slippers and my spectacles. Unquote. Eliza charges him why he has made her duchess Eli Eliza without thinking about the trouble it would create for her. In reply, Higgins tells her that the world would never have been created if its maker had been afraid of trouble to be cropped up later. Making means making trouble. Finding that Eliza refuses to sympathize with his viewpoint, he leaves the decision solely to her, declaring that he does not care what happens to either of them. He also tells her that she is free to live with her stepmother or to live on swelling flowers. However, Higgins proposes that he could adopt her as a daughter and settle money on her, or that she can marry Pickering. But to his surprise and utter frustration, he hears that Freddie Ainsford Hill is romantically interested in her. Higgins claims that Freddie cannot make anything of her. Eliza reacts that it may be possible for her to do something for Freddie and she wants only to be natural and a little kindness. Freddie can surely give to her. She is convinced that now she cannot go back to her old ways of life. And page 26 Also, she cannot think of living Quote, with a low common man after you too, in bracket Higgins and Pickering, bracket closed, unquote. It is evident that she frantically wants to marry Freddy as soon as possible. At this critical juncture, Higgins appears to be totally baffled and horrified as he utters, quote, I am not going to have my masterpiece thrown away on Freddy.
unquote. But Eliza is determined to marry Freddy, though she knows that he was not brought up to work. She will start teaching phonetics when she, what she learned from Higgins. This intention infuriates Higgins and Eliza is delighted to have at least found a way of tormenting Higgins. She announces that she will advertise in the papers that Higgins' duchess is only a common flower girl whom he has taught and that she will teach the same to anyone for a hundred guineas. Higgins is brewing with fury, but at the same time he is happy that Eliza is not snivelling anymore. He claims that he has made a true woman out of Eliza and he likes her the better for it. He is pleased at finding that she has become a tower of strength. He proposes that they can now live together like three old bachelors instead of only two men and a silly girl. At this crucial time, Mrs. Egan enters to inform that Eliza's carriage is waiting outside. Eliza goes out bidding goodbye to Higgins and telling him that she may not meet him anymore. She asks him to do his work himself instead of giving him some errands to do. As they leave, Mrs. Higgins remarks, quote, I am afraid you have spoiled that girl, Henry. I should be uneasy about you and her if she were less fond of Colonel Pickering." Unquote. In reaction to his mother's remark, Higgins refutes with uproaring laughter that she is going to marry Freddy. The play ends without any clear indication whom El Eliza will marry. It is thus evident that in Pygmalion, Shaw has made a conscious attempt to explore the interaction between male artistic creation and female self-creation. Page 27 Questions and Answers Question 1. Shaw's Pygmalion is a critique of Bing Bing British social class ideology. Discuss. Or, what attitude to the contemporary British society has Shaw conveyed in his play Pygmalion. Answer. Shaw's Pygmalion can be called an inclusive play. Shaw has included an upstart Eliza Doolittle in a drama about gentlemen like Higgins and Pickering. It depicts British society and class conflict as prevalent in the contemporary society. According to Reynolds, Eliza along with her in Angle Court Neighbours is a vital part of English social structure. Like Eliza's dustman father, members of Eliza's class perform distasteful but essential services for the rich. Higgins and his fellow use both strategies mentioned earlier of cleans in inverted commas themselves from the less desirable elements of society. First, the lower classes are banished from you, out of sight, out of mind. Although a small army of workers is required to maintain the standard of living depicted in Pygmalion, only a housekeeper, a dustman and a parlour maid are seen on stage. Second, the poor are denied the status of human beings as in this exchange from Act 2 of Pygmalion. Pickering in bracket in good human remonstrance bracket close does it occur to you Higgins that the girl has some feelings? Higgins in bracket looking critically at her bracket closed oh no I don't think so not any feelings that we need bother about. It is important to note that the poor are stereotyped as morally weak. In Act 1, Mrs. Ironsford Hill suspects that Eliza is a prostitute and buys a bunch of flour in hopes of confirming her suspicions. The mother, in bracket to the girl, bracket close, you can keep the change. 
द फ्लागल ओ थैंक यू लेडी द मदर नाउ टेल मी हाउ यू नो दैट द यंग जेंटलमैन्स नेम द फ्लागल आई डेंट द मदर आई हर्ट यू कॉल हिम बाई इट डोंट ट्राई टू रिसीव मी द फ्लागल इन ब्रैकेट प्रोस्टेस्टिंग ब्रैकेट क्लोज Who is trying to deceive you? I called him Freddy or Charlie, same as you might call yourself if you were talking to a stranger and wished to be pleasant. Freddy's sister Clara protests her mother's injustice to him. "Quote, really mama, you might have spared Freddy that." Unquote. But it is interesting to notice that clara does not take offense at the insult directed at another member of her own sex eliza is beneath her notice reynolds in bracket 1999 bracket closed argues within bracket despite the scorn repeatedly heaped on eliza and other of her class they perform another vital function that goes beyond their menial service to the rich page 28 they help classify british social structure eliza's quote listen grove lingo unquote so clearly defines her social position that when she masters upper class speech quests at the embassy reception have no clue to her origin and it is here with eliza's court new speech and court that british class ideology breaks down or court deconstructs and court genteel speech supposedly a natural acquisition of the well bred isn't court natural and court at all nor is it a reliable social indicator although the embassy guests seem homogeneous they are a jumbled lot their ranks include both quote upstarts and quote who have mastered refined speech and aristocrats who never never learn to speak it of the latter higgins complains quote they are such fools that they think style comes by nature to people in their position and so they never learn unquote reynolds aptly points that an elite class representative higgins himself is seriously flawed despite his social standing and quote miltonic mind unquote he is boorish and manipulative with a little as little respect for his peers as for members of eliza's class he airily suggests an arranged marriage of eliza who retorts quote we were about that at the corner of tottenham court road i sold flowers i didn't sell myself unquote at the end of the play she tells higgins quote i had only to lift up my finger to be as good as you unquote Eliza has discovered that fallacy of British social class ideology. Marxist Kenneth Burke defines ideology as an quote inverted geneal- genealogy of culture that makes for illusion and mystification by treating ideas as primary where they should have been treated as derivative unquote in bracket rhetoric 104 bracket closed ideologies naturalize events and relationships creating the impression of inevitability by concealing their causes and origins in order to deter questions doubts and critical thinking critic patricia walk says this process is accomplished through the medium of quote everyday language unquote by quote power structures through a continuous process of naturalization whereby forms of oppression are constructed in apparently innocent representation unquote in bracket 2 bracket close 
the insults that Higgins directs at Eliza without any sort of hesitation are linguistic evidence of the quote naturalization unquote process that British class structure has undergone. He rails at her with no fear of reprisal or contradiction. As observed by critic, Eliza's low status seems quote primary unquote the unchangeable result of heredity, even though it is actually quote derivative unquote resulting from economics, education, demographics and other social phenomena. Higgins's phonetic game of identifying people's origin in Act One derives the point oh sorry drives the point home. Speech patterns are the product not of genes or inborn character but geography. Question two Write a note on the appropriateness of the title of Shaw's Pygmalion or critically comment on the use of myth of Pygmalion in Shaw's play Pygmalion. Answer. George Barnacho has taken the title of the play Pygmalion from an ancient Greek myth of Pygmalion. According to that, page 29, Pygmalion, a famous artist and sculptor, carved a statue named Galatea which was so beautiful that no human being could possibly equal to it. Pygmalion got engrossed with the beauty of the, his masterpiece. As a result, at a festival, he prayed to the goddess of love, Aphrodite, in bracket, co- called Venus by the Romans, bracket close, to breathe life into the statue. To his astonishment, on his return home, he found that his prayer had been granted, that is, the statue turned a living woman. In the play Pygmalion, Shaw has attempted to rewrite the legend with a different ending. In it, Henry Higgins, a professor of phonetics, stands for, uh, professor, stands for Pygmalion while the flower girl Eliza stands for Galicia. Higgins, professor of phonetics, is meticulous in standard English speech production. He takes up the challenge of transferring, forming the flower girl Eliza, whose speech and death dress both are uncouth, into a duchess or lady, both in terms of culture and speech production. Higgins, with the help of Colonel Pickering, sincerely attempts to train the ignorant flower girl to speak standard English and behave like Duchess. He succeeds in doing so within a few months. The flower girl is now capable to go among the cultured and aristocratic people without anyone directing, uh, sorry, detecting or suspecting that she was born into different social class. This effort on the part of Higgins is not more than a professional experiment. He does not take any interest in Eliza as a living woman endowed with emotions and feelings, but he is more concerned with her only as quote human talking machine unquote. When the experiment has been successfully carried out, Higgins appears to be very satisfied with Eliza's performance in myths of cultivated society. Eliza, educated and trained to act as a respectable lady, wins the bet for him in the party. However, Higgins does not hesitate to think that she can go back to her own way of life. Teaching her to speak properly, he Quote, has lifted her to another plane, has given her a desire for a better life and created a bond between the two of them. Unquote. In bracket, AC ward, bracket closed. At the time of their meet, first meeting, Eliza's mind and emotions were not so developed. Higgins, however, ignored her feelings 
and has unknowingly made the statue live and activated the dormant feelings of hers. Eliza realizes that Higgins is selfish and does so does not think of her future. She also realizes that she cannot go back to her old profession that is the selling of flowers. Therefore, though she even suffers from the pricks of conscience at the throwing of slippers at Higgins, she decides to marry Freddie, a young boy, and leave her mentor. <coughs> Eliza's decision to marry Freddie shocks Higgins too much to maintain balance in his speech. He is frantic to prevent her from leaving him and marrying Freddie. In spite of his sentimentalization of his future condition due to her absence, she does not change her mind. It is thus evident that Eliza grows out of her limited circle and emerges as a self-sufficient, age-demanding lady. Page 30 who can separate herself from her creator Pygmalion, Higgins. Shaw also wants to recreate a new Pygmalion legend to define the new creator-created or teacher-taught relationship as found in the sequel. He as a dramatist wants to honor the human qualities like emotions, feelings, self-respect, self-decision, etc. That's why, unlike Galatia of the original legend, Eliza outgrows the expectations of the educator Higgins. However, Shaw's ambivalent ending of the play suggests that though he has based his play on the theme of Greek myth to give a message of the success of the creator, he has also tried to convey a unique message relating to the contemporary societal need. Thus, though the play ends with a different difference from the original legend, Shaw is apt in selecting the title Pygmalion in order to relate the intimate relationship between the creator and the created as found in the original myth as well as outgrow the original one to redefine that relationship. It suggests that Shaw is guided by his artistic insight and pragmatic value based ideology. In this process, Shaw has made his Pygmalion and Galatea contemporarily relevant and thereby has brought them to human level. Question 3. Critically comment on the subtitle of Shaw's Pygmalion or is Shaw's Pygmalion a romance? Justify your opinion. Answer. Bernard Shaw has subtitled his play Pygmalion quote, a romance. According to Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, the word romance means one an exciting, usually short relationship between two people who are in love with each other. Number two, love or the feeling of being in love. Three, a feeling of excitement and adventure, specially connected to a particular place or activity. Four, a story about love affair. Five, a story of excitement and adventure often set in the past. The above meanings of romance suggest that romance is basically an excitement based thrilling affair. From this perspective, the play Pygmalion can also be claimed as a romance. Pygmalion is an exciting play which shows how a teacher called Professor Higgins successfully transfers a flagal Eliza into a lady. Her success in the party has amused her teacher Higgins so much that he does not want separation from his own creation. This is the moment of excitement to him due to the successful result of his experiment. His amusement and excitement, however, 
start reproving as soon as Eliza raises her voice against him, throws his slipper towards him, accuses him of ignoring her emotions and feelings and declares her decision to go with Freddy. The scene of love affair between Eliza and Freddy and their subsequent decision of marriage are also indicative of the creation of the atmosphere of romance continued in the next file.